next is nitrogen cycle okay so nitrogen cycle when we talk about nitrogen cycle the 78 percentage of air on earth is composed of nitrogen okay 78 percentage of air in earth is composed of nitrogen but ironically we can say that this nitrogen is the most limiting nutrient for the plants okay even though 78 percentage of earth air is having nitrogen it is considered to be a limiting nutrient for plant why because plants can take nitrogen only mainly in two forms that is the ammonium ion in the form of ammonium ion or in forms of nitrate the plants cannot directly take molecular nitrogen it cannot directly take molecular nitrogen only in the form of either ammonium ions or nitrate more acceptable nitrate so that's why this molecular nitrogen which is abundant in atmosphere needs to be converted either into ammonium ion or nitrate for the plants to take it so we will see the steps involved in nitrogen cycle and how this is being carried out so the first step involved is nitrogen fixation the first step involved is nitrogen fixation so in nitrogen fi fixation what is happening is the conversion of nitrogen to ammonia is taking place okay nitrogen fixation the atmospheric nitrogen has been converted into ammonia and this happens mainly through three methods the first method is atmospheric nitrogen fixation so in atmospheric nitrogen fixation what is happening is that the atmospheric nitrogen is being converted into nitrogen oxides by the natural agents like lightning uv rays etc so that is what is happening in atmospheric nitrogen fixation okay in atmospheric nitrogen fixation the nitrogen fixation is being carried out by natural agents like lightning uv rays etc okay the second method in nitrogen fixation the first method is atmospheric nitrogen fixation and the second method by which we can fix the atmospheric nitrogen is through industrial fixation so so how this industrial fixation is taking place we know that from factories we are producing nitrogen fertilizers or ammonia fertilizers we are producing so through that method we can fix nitrogen so that is the second method industrial fixation that is from factories through ammonia fertilizers and the third method is the very important method which is the biological nitrogen fixation the biological nitrogen fixation so in biological nitrogen fixation what we are doing is that we are laying upon some biological nitrogen fixers like the microbes for example the acetobacter or rhizobium or cyanobacteria like the anabina and nostoc they all help in converting the molecular nitrogen into ammonia okay so they are known as the biological nitrogen 
fixers these microbes and they are having a particular enzyme which is known as nitrogenase which is helping them for this particular process so that is biological nitrogen fixation with the help of microbes for example the microbe rhizobium what they do is they'll have a mutual relationship with uh, the leguminous plants that is in the root nodules of the legumes and in exchange of this nitrogen what they are getting is the nutrition and shelter from the plant so that is a symbiotic mutualistic relationship between this rhizobium uh, microbe and the root nodules of the leguminous plant so that's an example where nitrogen fixing bacteria like rhizobium is living in the root nodules for this particular process okay so that's the first step and through the first step which is nitrogen fixation the nitrogen is being converted into ammonia and now this ammonia which is available for the plants through these various methods it is the plants will take this ammonia only in a, a limited sense or only less amount of ammonia is being taken because in higher amounts ammonia is toxic for the plants so they will prefer to take only lesser amounts and this the next step is that this formed ammonia should be converted into nitrate for the better utilization the formed ammonia by the process of nitrogen fixation has has now to be converted into nitrate for better utilization for the plants that is ammonia to nitrate okay so that is the second step involved where ammonia is being converted to nitrate and that particular process there are a few steps involved in this particular process and that particular process is known as the nitrification okay so in nitrification actually two steps is taking place the first step is conversion of ammonia into nitrite and then converting this nitrite into nitrate these two steps is constituting the process of nitrification okay so in nitrification first ammonia is converted into nitrite first ammonia is converted into nitrite by the microbe or by the bacterium nitrosomonas or nitrococcus ammonia is converted into nitrite by the bacterium nitrosomonas and nitro cocus so these bacteria convert ammonia into nitrite and then the nitrite is further oxidized to form nitrate so this is carried out by the bac bacterium which is known as nitrobacter okay nitrite converted to nitrate by the bacterium nitrobacter so these two steps are which is constituting the process of nitrification right now nitrates are formed and these nitrates are being absorbed by the plants from the soil to build up the organic mo molecules of food and then it is being uh, given to the consumers okay now the third step is ammonification okay the third step is ammonification so first step nitrogen fixation nitrogen converted to ammonia 
Second step is nitrification where ammonia needs to be converted into nitrate and before getting converted into nitrate an intermediary, intermediary step is there where this ammonia is first converted into nitrite and then nitrite oxidized into nitrate. The third step is ammonification. So in ammonification what is happening is that is the reverse. Okay, so when the plants and animals die, what happens? The dead and decaying plants is being decomposed by microbes. And what happens is that this organic nitrogen is being converted into ammonia. Here ammonia is being converted into nitrate and in ammonification, after the decaying process, what happens? This organic nitrogen from the dead and decaying plant and animal matter is being released back as ammonia. Right. Now, this is what is known as ammonification. The fourth step, the fourth step involved is denitrification. Denitrification. So denitrification is that we know by the process of nitrification nitrate is formed and these nitrate which are some are soluble in the uh, water what happens is that they are lost from the soil and by the process of leaching. Leaching is the process where you know in a solvent mainly water these nutrients will be soluble and they will be lost through surface runoff and all. That particular process is known as leaching. So, this nitrate when it is soluble, it is lost from the soil by the process of leaching and uh, it gets into part of the water cycle and finally what happens is that they can reach the ocean or the water sources, right? So, what happens from the ocean it is being reversed back or it is being given back to the atmosphere by a process which is known as the denitrification. That process from where the nitrogen is being given back into the atmosphere that is known as denitrification again this is first this is what is happening when denitrification occurs in the ocean also in soil in soil also these nitrate present is being broken down into nitrogen and then it is being sent back to the atmosphere by some microbes or bacteria that process is also constituting denitrification that particular bacteria is pseudomonas or theobacillus okay pseudomonas or theobacillus so, pseudomonas or theobacillus are the bacteria which is constituting the denitrification process that is in soil. The nitrates when it is being broken down into the nitrogen and sent back to the atmosphere by the bacteria pseudomonas and theobacillus. Okay. Now, The human activities like in excessive use of nitrogen fertilizers, fossil fuel burning, forest fires or man-made forest burning all have increased the level of nitrogen in the atmosphere, right? Or the nitrogen in the ecosystem. So what happens when there is increased level of nitrogen in the atmosphere contributing to pollution as well as increased levels of nitrogen in the soil with the excessive use of fertilizers and all what happens is that these uh, by part of surface runoff what happens this can lead to the uh, water sources like oceans lakes and all where it is causing a process which is known as eutrophication this particular process is very important when you deal with pollution related topics also you have to mention this process that is eutrophication which is happening mainly because of the increased level of nutrients in the 
water sources that is eutrophication for example as i told earlier due to the excessive use of these nitrogen fertilizers and all surface runoff to rivers lakes and all will take place which is creating an increased level of nutrients in the water bodies and that particular process is known as eutroph eutrophication and this can again lead to phenomenon like algal bloom increased growth of algae in the surface of the water and this again causes harm to the marine environment because this algal bloom when it comes what happens is that the marine life is adversely affected they are not getting the enough oxygen for carrying out their needs or it is exist it is uh, opposite or it is an opposing characteristics to their survival so this is how the eutrophication is badly affecting uh, the marine environment system so this is also uh, the nitrogen fertilizers when excessively used have an adverse effect on the groundwater as well since it is being penetrated into the groundwater the groundwater is also being polluted with excessive use of nitrogen fertilizers so these are some other aspects of the nitrogen okay so next is oxygen cycle 